I said, are you set? Before I bring up a uh, uh, speaker for the night, I want to specially recognize my very good friend um, all the way from Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> he's been here before. He's not a stranger, you know, to this house. Uh, it's been a blessing to us, and he will continue to be a blessing to us in this house. He came with a team uh, from the Leading Light Network. Uh, there's a conglomerate of Leading Light people. It's network from around Africa meeting in Lagos this week, and he came with a lot of them, Pastor Larry Jiwala and the Leading Light team. Can you please, please welcome him for me? Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Lan. Thank you, thank you. You know, when Pastor Balaji was preaching in the morning, he spoke about the fact that we've known each other for uh, about 25 years or so. I actually <laughs> met Pastor Balaji through Pastor Lan. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was Pastor Landa, first of all, mentioned there's one radical boy in the University of Lagos. We were already out of school, you know, and uh, doing ministry, but Pastor Bolaji was still, uh, you know, in university. There's one boy in the University of Lagos. He's causing trouble there. And then he invited Yemi, and then Yemi came back to tell me, that boy is not well, though. <laughs> he said, ah, if you see what that boy is doing. <laughs> so uh, that, uh, that was how I met uh, is where in Jesus' name. Yeah. What I meant, you know, what I is I like, is you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. It's a righteous unwellness, not not the other way around. <laughs> As a radical for Jesus. Yes, that's and uh, you know one of the things we celebrate about him is that consistency. Yeah, consistency. When <laughs> when when Pastor Bolaji was in the University of Lagos, I think he started possibilities something possibilities night or something since that time. And uh, as a student, he will gather crowd for possibilities night. You know, he just has a thing uh, for grow. And the hand of God upon him and the ministry. Tonight, with a heart that is ready to receive, I want you to rise on your feet and receive the ministry of the global lead pastor of Avestas International Christian Center. And the convener of the next level prayer gatherings, Pastor Bolaji Do. Please make him welcome. Come on, come on. Show some love, everyone online, everywhere. Now praise the Lord. Amen. Please, you will indulge me to stand for another five or seven minutes. We got used to it in the morning, right? Exactly. We got used to it in the morning. Indulge himself on that five or seven. Pastor Land, it's nice to see you. I've not seen you in many years, and um, not just Pastor, not just Pastor Godman did Pastor Land introduce me to almost everyone I know from Pastor Yemi. He was the first I knew in the whole pack, and he was generous enough to introduce me to every other person. And it's nice to see you again. He always, you know, tells him tell, tell me that he has the anointing to connect people, and you know, he's still connecting. He's still connecting. Glory to God. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had a great time in the morning. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, we don't have to say what I'm now. Praise God. I got messages that some of you, you couldn't rest. You just prayed up to the evening. Someone said, I just went home. I refused to talk to anybody. I just went to pray. And some of the testimonies we saw online were also outstanding. So God be the glory. So let me tell you what we're going to do this evening. This evening, I'm talking about, we're going to talk specifically about dealing with delays. Yeah, we're going to talk specifically about dealing with delays. And um, I'm going to break the prayers at some point. And the teaching at some time asks us to pray. Then we're going to end up, you know, from there. Then we have our second speaker. Are we ready for that? Dear Father, once again, we thank you. Will you lift up your two hands and pray in the Holy Spirit for the next few minutes? Bronde Karasila Proskatala, Membregido Korasila Vreketong Lekish, Benendri Haski Vrikundra Masuvra Kila Posia, Ra Ikontali, Kratis Kondrin de Mangaponga Lagadi, Edre Konske Pronse Poletina Munta Balabadi, Eloske Tandro Kandri Kandru Kandra Ninanta, 
Brigos Katila Bronski Bronta Kela Raketungesh Tushte Kashte Celebrenta Kila Bronski Bronta Bora Balika Retoman and Grusa Prosa Raki Somba Shadika Prontali Legento Rebekitom Brandekara Rakomba Kesto Bragadi Rakatega Bunda Likura Bahaya Rakinto Kaba Bronto Hola Extico Shaila Hilo Koraba Lekurasi Lekito Bronteka Elikon Rebat Take a Rosia Lamanta, Leco Shateco Bonte, Le Bonsaila, Likeela Catilente Menente, and in the Quintona, Pinonta Casca, Sila Curabiraco, Equisco, Celebande, Ina Corati, Penicomante, Halavaya. In Jesus' name we pray. Let, let, let's pray from the scripture we read in the morning, Ezra chapter 8, verse 21. Apostle Selma, it's nice to see you. <laughs> Praise God. I wanted to read this because we're going to use it to pray. The Bible says, this is Ezra speaking. And Ezra had a project from the Lord. He said, then I proclaim a fast at the river of Havana, that we may afflict ourselves before the Lord to seek of him, take note of the word, a right way. This evening, receive the right way. Yeah. You have tried all sorts in business. You have tried all sorts in relationship. You have tried all sorts in investment. But there is a right way. In the name of Jesus, receive the right way. Yeah. Uh, there is something called the spirit of error. The, when the spirit of error enters a man, it deviates from alignment. It deviates from truth. I pray for you when you're making critical decisions, the spirit of error will not come unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It says, and to seek of him in right way for our little ones and for our substance. Verse 22 is where I'm going to. And this is Ezra. Ezra, I mean, this is recorded by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, and Ezra said, I was ashamed to ask of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Why was he ashamed? Was it because he was proud? Look at what he says. He said, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, the hand of the Lord is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against them that forsake him. What was Ezra saying? I want to notice something. Ezra was saying, Play, but just play a little, the volume a little lower. You know, this is what Ezra was saying. Ezra said, we could not go back and tell the king to help us because we had bragged before the king that God will help us. And it's your prayer tonight that every brag that you have made in the name of God will become reality. Some of you, listen to me, some of you have told the doctors that says you'll not have a baby. You said, doctor, I will have a baby. I said, that brag will become reality. Yeah. You have told your colleagues, you will not take loan for the project. That fund will come some way. I said, that brag will become reality. Yeah. You've told your mother, mommy, I will not bath with water. I will not bath with black soap. I will not bath with red soap. The God I serve will do it. He will do this marriage issue. That prayer will become reality. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, lift up your heads, all ye gate, and be lifted up ye everlasting doors. He said, let the King of Glory come in. They said, who is the King of Glory? He said, the Lord strong and mighty. He said, the Lord mighty in battle, for he is the King of Glory. Every door, psychopathia, likepario, psychatali bahila, recumantaya. Every door that's been shut against you by apostolic authority, let them open now. Marital doors open now. Career doors open now. Immigration doors open now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. There's someone, 3434 is a number that means something to you. 
you lost something. I've been trying to recover it. The Spirit of God should tell you it's recovered. Yeah. There's a lady, for some time you've been bleeding. You've not noticed, but the bleeding has stopped. Yeah. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please, you may have your seat. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So this morning we began to consider some thoughts on changing outcomes through prayer. And there was an aspect of the teaching I wiggled into, but I couldn't really stay there. As we began to talk about soul travail, we began to talk about soul travail. And the reason I'm saying so is that sometimes prayer is like a house. Your experience is determined by the door you open. In the house, you open the kitchen and there's an experience in the kitchen. You open the sitting room and there's an experience in the sitting room. And you open the bedroom and there's an experience there. And you open the bedroom and there's an experience there. And it's still the same house, but it's just different dimensions of the working of the Spirit. Let's go again to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6 to 6. And we'll read verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6 to 6 in verse 8. It says, who had had such a thing? Who had seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? This, this, these are supernatural dimensions. He said, who has heard? Who has seen? He said, or shall a nation be born at once? They, they, they are dimensions of these things. He says, for as soon as Zion travailed. And a lot of God's people are not used to this kind of prayer. He said, as soon as Zion travailed. He said, in one day, the earth broke forth. You put in the seed and the harvest was there. That radically, to the mind, it's impossible. What he's talking about here is compression of time. One of the other, and oh wow, this, oh, this is, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is so powerful because, you know, I don't know if you read the story. When God was going to prove that Aaron was the anointed high priest. You know what I told him to do? He said, let all of the leaders take their rod and put in the temple. Remember when they say rod. Rod is not something like it's a tree. It's your walking rod, like a walking stick. It's dried. It's dead. It's finished. The Bible says, by the next day, when they went to check the rod, that the rod of Aaron had begun to what? It had budded. I wish it said budded. I don't have the time. Go back and check it. He said, it had begun to bear fruits. The work of the Spirit. So much so that you will wonder what was happening from January to June. How come everything happened in July? But he began to tell us how this happens. He says this. He says, for as soon as Zion travailed. What is travail? There are different kinds of prayers. There's a prayer that is prophetic, is confession. A travel is different. A travel is different. You stay there. You stay there. And you allow the emotions of God to go in your hearts. It's your, your emotions of God goes in your hearts. I said in the morning, I said, if you've never cried in prayer before, I feel bad for you. Because you can't understand these things. You allow the emotions of God to grow in your heart. I cry often, not because I, not because I love to cry, but when you're in that state, the emotion of the spirit aligns with your emotions. And at the instant, you don't know when you begin to shake. You don't know when your eyes become wet. And you're sobbing because there's something that needs to be done. There's a partnership with divine purpose in prayer. There's a partnership to achieve in prayer. And the way that prayer works, it will stay there until a note of victory or a word comes from heaven. Sometimes it will be a joy. And nothing has changed physically, but inside, my God, something has happened. And we must get acquainted to it. 
if you want to see this kind of result. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So when we have done everything, when we have done everything, and this is what I'm going to, someone said, Pastor, thank you so much for teaching us and challenging us in this dimension of prayer. But I've done everything. I've prayed. I've fasted. I've sown. Everybody has laid hands on me. And when they say that, they almost want to intimidate you to let you know that there's no new thing you can do that has not been done. For your information, the scripture cannot be broken. He said, let God be true and all men liars. When there is, when you've done all the prayers, what next is there to do? What light does God's word show us the next to do? I understand the frustration. It, it, it can be frustrating when you've done everything and the person you're praying for died. I understand the frustration when you've done everything and your child can't just seem to recover. I understand the frustration when you've done everything and you just seem not to get married. The business is just what's going on. The Bible even says in the book of Proverbs, he said, he said good news like cold water to a thirsty soul. So what do you do? So what do you do? And that's why I wanted to focus at, because one part is to talk about what you have to do in prayer. But if there is a delay, how do you handle the delay? Glory to God. I said glory to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10 and verse 15. The Bible says this, And if the iron be blunt, and they do not know which, he must first put more strength, for wisdom is profitable to direct. Has someone that leads loads of people in prayer, I will tell you something. If you are praying for something for a long time that is not happening, stop praying, start studying. Take it from me. Stop praying, start studying. You know the problem is this. We think that the way to amplify prayer is by raising the volume. No, the way you amplify prayer is by increasing revelation content in your prayer. Prayer does not work by volume. The volume is the expression of the depth of the soul travail. So if I'm praying about something and it's not working, I'm going to stop because, because God is faithful. So I'm going to go back to the word and say, what do I need to see to make this more effective? And let me say something to you here. Let me explain the concept of prayer. Prayer is a gun. And this is why when you pray with the word, it never works. You know why I said prayer is a gun? If a gun has no bullet and you shoot it, what will happen? What will happen? It will ne There's nothing to be afraid about. What is the bullet? The word is the bullet. The word is the bullet. That's why when you read Ephesians chapter 6, did you notice there's no weapon called prayer? Oh, you didn't notice that? The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the shoes of the gospel. Where's prayer? There's no weapon called prayer. But look at the next thing. It says, and with all prayer. That means all the weapons work by prayer. The reason why your prayer does not work is that you think your prayer works by shouting the name of Jesus and talking. No, sir. It works by bullets. The word is the bullet. So the reason why you've been praying is also working is that you've been shooting empty scenes. Pa, 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 And that's why you see people, demon oppress them. You say, Gigi, 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 someone will slap them upon the destruction of Jesus Christ. And the reason why is that it's not about calling the name. It's the authority of the name based on the word of God. Praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. So it says wisdom is profitable to direct. So when, when, when there are delays, there's a tendency for you to lose your self-esteem. And you want to watch against that. You begin, to come up with, you begin to come up with philosophy that God doesn't love me. God is punishing me. Don't allow your tragedy to change your theology. Don't, when you go to negative period, that's not the time to change what to believe. That's not even the time to examine your theology. The reason why is that you are in an emotional state. 
So when you lose the job, when there's something challenging that happens to the pregnancy, that's not the time to say, maybe it's the will of God I should not marry. Don't come up with those kind of theology. Don't change your theology to accommodate the tragedy. Glory to God. So you begin to lose your self-esteem. The second thing that happens is this. You, you, you become negative. L look at the case of Anna. As Anna had childbirth issues, Anna became so negative, she began to fight her husband and say, give me children or I'll die. Is the husband the one that can give children? Because what happens is that once you get into that state, you become negative. And if you're not careful, you begin to self-sabotage. You have gotten so negative about marriage that even your Instagram status is on private. How would they find you? You have gotten so discouraged about not having a job. You have stopped applying. It. How would they employ you? Why did you stop trying? All of a sudden, the negativity in your soul has entered everything that you do. Now you have become so negative. You have become so negative. So the question today is this, and this is, the, this is it. Why are there delays? And what can I do if there are delays? I'm going to rush through it. One of the reasons why there are delays is the law of the process. And please take note of this. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, as long as the earth remains, what will happen? Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Be careful not to call process delay. Be careful that you don't call process delay. When a pregnant woman is, when a woman is pregnant, no matter the prayers, the, the period that she will carry the baby for is what? Nine months. Some of you are not delayed, it's just a process. But the reason why you feel you are delayed is because you keep comparing yourself. My friend got married. My other one built a house. My other one built a house. We may be age mates, but not grace mates. Be careful. Because when you say you are delayed, delayed is predicated on the fact that you know the timing. Excuse me, have you seen his calendar for your life? If you're not careful, you will use another person's timing to put yourself under pressure. And one of the worst things to happen is to arrive ahead of destiny. And that's why some people got married early. And two years after, it crashed. Not because it was not the will of God for them to marry. They entered the marriage premature. So they had to step out to learn the lesson. To be honest with you, I'm thankful some things did not happen to me earlier when I prayed for them. And let me tell you something, eh? Some of you that are here, especially those of you that are married, when you were single and you were shedding tears, you were, very, you were saying, God, have you forgotten me? God did not send your husband and wife at that time. You know why? With your own hand, you would have destroyed it. So what God did was that he helped you in rehearsal. People were rehearsing with each other. You were rehearsing. So they broke your heart, you broke their heart. <laughs> you learned the right lesson. You learned the right lesson. Eventually, when the real man came, he said, wow, you're so patient, you talk so well. Your parents train you so well. You say, <laughs> ah, if you had come two years ago. Ah, ah. He said, thank God for patience that had this thorough walk. <laughs> praise God. I said, praise God. I thank God you didn't blow at that time. Because what you would have done. You will not even be in church now. But by the time you blew, God had matured you so that money could not carry you away. Praise God. So the first reason why some people have delay is process. The second reason why some people have delay, and I'm just trying to jump so that we can make it faster. The second reason why people have delay is capacity. God told Israel, he said, I will give you the land, but little by little. It's capacity. The question is that, I know you are praying for things, but do you have the capacity for what you are praying for? I know you are praying for things. Do you have the capacity for what you are praying for? Let me do this simple illustration. You know, I'm quite animated, so you're going to allow me. This morning, we had a lot of illustration. You're going to allow me. I need people that have iPhones. I need about seven of you. Do you have about seven of you here? But not the same. I need iPhone 15. I need 14. I need 13. I need 10. I need seven. I need like that. You know, one of each. If you have one, just come, just come, just, you can just come to the stage. You, I need, just tell me, iPhone 1 is yours? 12, yeah. No more iPhone 12. What's yours? 13. I need iPhone 7, 7, something like, what's yours? 14, yeah. 15. 
Eight. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ten. I, I think we're fine now. What iPhone is yours? Is like seven? Five. No, no, we're, we're done. We're done. What iPhone is yours, sir? Fourteen. No, we have fourteen already. We have fourteen already. Who has iPhone f- seven? Eight. Seven. Yeah. Any iPhone eight? Eight. What about nine or ten? Is it nine or ten? Exactly. Line up according to your iPhones. Line up according to your iPhones. <laughs> Praise God. Line up according to your iPhones. So this is what? This is seven. So the next person is eight. Eight. Nine or ten? Eleven. Where's ten? Ten is here. Yeah, go on. Twelve, yeah? Fifteen, yeah? Where are you? Fourteen. So, so what is yours? Seven. Okay, seven is right here. Are you seven also? Okay, I mean, two of you can be there. It's fine. And watch what capacity does. Watch this now. This is iPhone 7. Is it an iPhone? But can you do what iPhone 15 can do? The same iPhone. So what happens to you is this. Why is the iPhone upgraded? With each upgrade, there are new features. New problems, new features. But the problem is that you have refused to grow. You are in version 7 of yourself. Meanwhile, life is in version 15 of you. And you are asking, so when life presents you version 15 problems, you are using version 7 of your phone to solve it. You are not wondering what's wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You are just in the old version of your new self. You have to expand capacity. You have to expand capacity. So you, you are here, but listen to me. I, I, you know, I, I can imagine some things that this phone cannot do. This phone is an iPhone. It's still you, but you have to grow and grow to you know, your version 8 and go to upgrade 10 and go to 11 and go to 12 and go to 13 and go to 14 and go to 15. But the challenge is that you've refused to grow. But meanwhile, we are in the year where the version that is responding is version 15, but you are still in version 7 of yourself. And you're wondering, why is my life like this? And the reason why is that you are not at the best version of yourself. And you know the good thing? There's always an upgrade. No matter where you are, there's an upgrade. You can choose today and there can be an upgrade. There's always an upgrade. Question, why not go for an upgrade? Why, you know, I I can imagine sometimes you have challenges using some features, right? Right? She would have some challenges because I don't even know if, if iPhone support iPhone 7 still. The kind of prayers you are praying now, angels may not even be supporting it. Because you are still praying level 7 prayer and angels are saying she should be on level 15. And you are wondering, how come I'm attracting men like this? And the reason why you're attracting men like this is because you are still version 7 of yourself and attracting version 7 men and attracting version 7 men and attracting version 7 opportunities. And you're saying, Lord, why are you doing this to me? And God is saying, it's not me. It's not me. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Expand your capacity. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. You can go back to your seats. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So the, the third reason for delay is this. The, the third reason for delay, which most of us are familiar with, is the works of demons. Daniel chapter 10. The Bible says the angel said as it was coming, that a demonic spirit, the prince of Pasha, interfered with it. And this morning session, we began to talk about the concept of the face of the covering cast. And we can go back to the morning session and listen to it. It's just very instructive. But the fourth thing that causes delay is inconsistency. The Bible says that unstable as, as water, that will not excel. You know, I'm, I'm just giving the background because I want to stay more in the solutions. I want to stay more in the solutions. So, I want to stay more in the solution. So, how do you break, how do you break the power of delay? That's where I want to stay. And I want to, I want, how do you break the power of delay? The first thing... The first thing is this. Let's just go to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. The first thing I've said it in the teaching is about you. I've said in the teaching is about you becoming the best version of yourself. And just make up your mind. A lot of people go through life but not grow in life. I'm glad for the friends that I have that we grow together. I'm glad for those kind of friendships. I'm glad that my best days was not when I was in university. 
Have you not met some people that says, those days on campus? I'm like, is that your best days of prayer? What about now? Thank God for what God did those days. What about now? The fire is burning at a higher magnitude. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Yeah. So the first way to break the power of delay is that building capacity. Yeah. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. I want to read. Let's read this together. I want to go. For the said he, yeah, fear not Daniel. For from the first day thou didst set their heart to understand and to chasten thyself before the Lord, thy words were heard. I want you to notice the last line that the angel said to Daniel, he said, the reason why I broke through the demon barrier and came was because of your words. When there was no change, you kept saying the same thing. Meaning that if Daniel had changed his word, the, demon, the demonic op opposition will win. When there's a delay, can you maintain your words? All of a sudden, you're there, I don't know. They say the cancer will kill me. I, I, I'm tired. All of a sudden. He's, so all the time there was delay, Daniel maintained his word. He said, I've come for your word. He maintained his word. He didn't see the result. He kept saying the same thing. He kept saying the same thing. He kept saying the same thing. The thing is that your word and power, either demons or angel, once you don't see change, what do you say? Are you able to hold on to what you are saying? And what you're doing is that the same way you've sowed very powerful seeds, you begin to sow very negative seeds with your words. And the seed begins to choke each other. In one way, you know, you come to accelerate conference and say, oh, thank you, Jesus, because it's a new beginning. As soon as it's Monday morning and something happens at work, I'm tired. This year is just useless for me. And you begin to say things that will cancel the seed of what you've spoken. The angel said to him, I have come for your words. No wonder when Zachariah was going to say negative things, the angel said, before you use your mouth to destroy the process, you will be dumb for a while. So that until it happens, you cannot talk. When you talk, it's too late. Sometimes when you don't know what to do, just keep quiet and say, we well, thank God. And not because I don't know what to say, but I don't want to destroy the process. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The third thing is this, and this is very powerful, from the book of Mark chapter 4. Every time there's a delay, what God does is this. I want to notice something. God does things to help you stay in thanksgiving. And I'm just giving you this. Mark chapter 4. The Bible says, when the earth bring it forth, it bring it forth first the blade, then the air, and the full corn in the blade. Take note of what I said. It said, when the earth produces, it said it will bring forth the blade, the air, and the full corn in the blade. And this is how you break the power of delay. What does this mean spiritually? This is what it means. It says, this is how the kingdom of God works. That is right. It says, for the earth will bring forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the air, and the full corn in the air. I'll tell you how this works. So you begin to pray for capital. You need 100 million. From nowhere, one small deal happens, and 2 million shows up. And most of you don't understand that that is the blade. The blade is not a testimony. The blade is the proof that something has started. When you see the blade, what God expects of you is to go into thanksgiving and say, Father, I thank you because I see your hand. You have started it, I give you the praise. But what happens to most Christians is that because they are not taught, when they see the blade, they say, uh -uh, I'm looking for 100 million, 2 million. What can this do? And they destroy the process. The way you water the blade, the way you grow the blade is by watering it with thanksgiving. You are praying that God will send someone to marry. All of a sudden, this guy shows up and this guy is just saying, no, no. And you say, God, I was praying for someone, not something. And when you say that, what you have done is that you've killed the blade. I will give you two very powerful testimonies. My sister moved to the U.S. a couple of years ago and she went to do her master's. And... Um, just around COVID. And when she went to do her master's around COVID, very powerful. When she went to her master's, she finished and she was applied to separate places and nobody, 
Nobody responded to her. She called me. She said, you are praying for everybody. He said, me, your sister. You are not praying for me. You know, this and this and this and this. I said, what's the problem? She told me, we prayed. Within one month, about five to seven of the places she applied to got back to her. Then she called me after one month. He said, I told you that there's a demonic problem. I said, why? He said, see, all of them got back to me, first stage, and nobody has gotten back to me. This is the sixth week. And I said, no. That's the wrong way to think about it. The way to think about it is that God has started the process. I told her, go into a place of thanksgiving and bless his holy name. He said, is that what I should do? I said, go ahead and do it. She went ahead and did it. Within the next two weeks, she got a job in dollars six figures. They paid that several things, thousand dollars to relocate her to another state. And the principle is that first the blade. You know, I'm saying this to you. Many of God's Christians, what should inspire you to thank God is what is depressing you. A lady in our church, a lady in our church was trying to have children. Seventh year in marriage, she went for an IVF. She had done about a couple of IVFs, several IVFs. No one ever stayed. But this fourth IVF, gosh, she got pregnant. But I think around the third or sixth month, I can't remember the story again. The third or sixth month, she woke up at night and saw blood. Her husband called me. He said, my wife wants to go to Tobiland Bridge and jump down the cliff. Ah, I called her. He said, finally, I'm pregnant. He said, why am I losing the baby again? She cried. We all cried. After three days, I went back to meet her. I said, listen, have you ever been pregnant before? He said, never. Have you done all this before? You've never been pregnant. But you've been pregnant now. I said, go to God in Thanksgiving. Father, thank you for showing me that I can even be pregnant. She, listen to me. She said, that one is tough. I said, but you have never been pregnant before. I said, take more time and cry. So she cried for another one week. She went back and said, Father, I thank you that I'm pregnant. Did it. Three months after that, she got pregnant without IVF. Nine months after that time, she had twins. It was double for her trouble. But the principle is, first the blade. So you need to see God in what does not look like a testimony. And appreciate the hand of God. Listen to me. The hand of God you appreciate will multiply in your life. The hand of God you ignore will diminish. That's why those that complain in the wilderness, nobody entered the promised land. But those that were grateful eventually entered into the fullness of the fullness of the blessings of Christ. This is where we have missed it. Ah, we missed it. When the blade shows up, instead of us to be grateful, we grumble. Instead of us to be grateful, we complain. Instead of the grateful, we sometimes we ignore it. And you don't understand. It fests the blade. The blade is a part of the food that is not edible. But it shows you that something is growing. The air is the part of the food that is not edible. But it shows you that something is growing. Maybe you are praying for funding. And someone just says, just take this 10,000 error. It's not the 10 million you are looking for. But the blade has showed up. The blade is the proof that God has begun something. You know why? You would take that seed in your heart and say, Father, I can see your hand already. And begin to water it with the word of God and an explosion will come. So the way you deal with delay is to look for the blade. And you know why God gives you the blade? The blade is God's principle of encouragement. That while you are in your waiting season, there's something to hold on to that tells you that God has started. And let me tell you something. Everybody, God does it for you. You will go, the doctor will just say, ah, maybe this is it. And the last thing where I will stop is Mark chapter 9. So the third one is Thanksgiving. Mark chapter 9. Verse 28. Mark chapter 9. And this is a story where they brought the, the, um, the boy that was possessed to the disciples of Jesus. And when the boy, the boy that was possessed to the disciple of Jesus, they tried to cast out the devil. They did everything they could. They casted, they sang, they reused praise and worship, they played message. You know, if you've been in Christianity for a long time, you would have even read methods of casting out demons. Have you read books like that? Ah, you, if you got born again early, you didn't read Rebecca Brown? You didn't read Emmanuel Eni? Ah, you didn't hear Sister Grace's testimony? You don't know 666 and 999? Ah, these are new Christianity. <laughs> those days when you get born again, they just give you those kind of materials. <laughs> Praise God. He came to set the captives free. 
Deliver from the power of darkness. Vessel unto honor. Prepare for war. Pigs in the parlor. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's someone that is praying for an autistic child and you have begun to see improvements, but you are looking down on it. The blade has started. Instead of you to complain and mama, go back to God in thanksgiving. So this is the last thing you do when you're going to delay. And this might be the most significant, this is the most significant for me. The Bible says, and when he was coming to the house, a disciple asked him privately and said, why could we not cast him out? And this is the principle. Please, everybody pay attention. It's a very simple principle. Every time you've done everything you know, the first thing is that you go back to the word of God and say, what don't I know? Then the second thing is this. Please take note of this. You go to God in prayer and engage what I call the prayer of inquiry. What is the prayer of inquiry? The prayer of petition focuses on God meeting your needs. The prayer of inquiry is not asking God to do something. It's asking for insight and wisdom. So the prayer of inquiry is this. Lord, I've done everything to secure the project. I've prayed all manners of prayer. What do I need to know or see to make it happen? The Bible says the disciples went to Jesus and they said, why could we not cast him out? And the reason why they said that was that they had observed the ministry of Jesus. They saw how he spoke to the demon possessed. They saw how he waved his hand. They saw the manner he spoke. So as Thomas did his own, it didn't work. Peter got there. Peter also tried his own. Andrew said, Peter, step aside. Also tried his own. All of them tried their own. It didn't work. And they said, that's it. They went to meet the master. And the reason why is that there are dimensions to this thing that is spiritual where the Lord will literally open his eyes and say this is what it is. He said, why couldn't it work? How do you pray the prayer of inquiry? And when do you pray it? When you have done everything and nothing is working. The first step of the prayer of inquiry is this. It's the conviction that it is the will of God for you to have it. The reason why is that Everywhere the will of God is not known, faith cannot be developed. So if I say, maybe it's the will of God, it should happen, no, 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 it will not come to you. So the first thing, and that's why, but I can say something very powerful. And I'm saying this because as a prayer person, I see the gaps in prayer. You must do a lot of work on yourself before you pray. Because the battlefield is first in the mind. But I can tell you that, the son wants to pray about, and it will take him three months, six months. And the reason why is that he's brooding scriptures to pull down mental strongholds. He's brooding scriptures to stay up faith. He's brooding scriptures to spark up faith and hope in his heart. It's not the kind of one we have today. I'm going like this. That's not how it works. There are laws that govern the spiritual world. And I'm saying this. There are laws that govern the spiritual world. And if you walk in the spirit, you know these laws. One of our church members, the father was sick. And they got one of our pastors that should go and pray for him. I said, laid my hands upon him. I said, thank you, Jesus. And I pulled my hands back. And I said, we should go. The pastor close to you said, ah, pastor, you didn't pray. I said, because he's going to die. He said, how do you know? I said, as I touched him, the power flowed out of my right hand. Touched him and returned back into my hand. And I knew that I was going to die. Two weeks after he died, he came back and said, just as you said. The thing is that there are lots of the spirits. They govern the spiritual realm. So you can't just say, eh, I just want to go and do it. You can't rush this thing, though. You must link these things. Either you believe them or not, gravity is real. Jump up and see it. Praise God. I said, praise God. So the first thing about the love inquiry is that rock solid conviction. And it's not convincing. It's that conviction come that when the Bible says faith is a substance of things so forth, the word is opostatics and a link on. It's a conviction. The Greek is opostatics. It's, it's a conviction. It's not something they told me. I go to the word of God and over time of staying there, I'm convinced that this is it. Even though I've not seen it, I'm convinced. So the first thing is conviction. The second thing in prayer requires is that you go to God in prayer. And when you go to God, you go neutral. What's neutral? Neutral is that, Lord... I'm not asking for anything. I'm asking for wisdom. In the prayer of inquiry, it's not the prayer for something. It's a prayer for what? Wisdom. And you're just saying, Lord, 
I've been praying about this. Show me what next I must do. Show me what next I must see. Show me how to pray about this. That's why the scripture comes to mind, Romans chapter 8, that the Spirit himself, what? Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it said, the Spirit himself helpeth our infirmities. He says, for we do not know what and how we shall pray for as we ought to. So sometimes you know what to pray for, but you don't know the details of how to pray for it. You are the one that thinks that the manager doesn't want to promote you. You don't understand that the company will be, will, is going down. And God doesn't want you to move in that area because when the new management comes, they will sack everybody on the next level. So you keep pushing and pushing and pushing. But God in his wisdom is holding you back. As you begin to pray, God will show it to you. I've seen people that they promoted them. Three months after, they took over the bank, sack of the directors. The man was only director for three months. He was not part of the bad decisions, but he was under fire. The disciples said, very simply, they said, why could we not cast him out? And as he said so, he opened their mind and saw it. Brothers and sisters, that's what you need when you have to live. I'm telling you. God is not wicked. God is kind. You will begin to pray prayers like, Lord, show me the detailed plan. And the Spirit of God is good and kind. He will show it to you. You will now understand, this is where I missed it. This is where I missed it. The reason why is that the Bible says the way of the foolish will yet every one of them because they do not know the way into the city. So if your prayers are not working, it's because you don't know the way into the city and the prayer of inquiry will show you. And this is how the prayer of inquiry too will work eventually. This is how it will work eventually. This is how it will work. Once you finish the prayer of inquiry, it always work, ends with a prophetic word or direction. And what that does is that this rubber band, this is what it does. This is, this is the end. What it does is this. If I don't want this book to be all about the place, I bind it this way. This is an anchor. This rubber band is what? An anchor. When you finish the prayer of inquiry, God will release prophetic direction to you. You know why? When you go back and things want to blow you, let me, my sister here, come. Yeah, yeah, please come. I just, yeah. yeah. I, don't know, I, I love your hair. You can even just sit down here. Just your hair. I just need your hair. Just face us with your hair. Just, you know, Look, look at something now. If she's singing and praising God, can I just touch? Is it okay? Is it okay? No, no, yeah. So if you sing and touching, the hell will be going everywhere. But she doesn't want to go anywhere. All she has to do is to take the rubber. So what? Bind it. Just, I don't know how to do it, you know. Yeah. Just help me hold this onto the rubber. If she's still going to the experience of jumping and dancing, she's not shaking again because the hair has been anchored. When you're going to the prayer of inquiry, the way you know you have victory is that revelation will come. When you go back into that situation, instead of you to cry, there will be something that will anchor you. And that's what the Bible calls the belt of truth. It's the anchor. It anchors you. So when the doctor says, Madam, the cancer is growing bigger, you say it's okay. And he said, your response is different because you have been anchored. You have been anchored. You've been anchored in the word that this sickness is not unto death. There's a word you have received. When they say that things are coming down, you say, but the Lord has told me that in famine I will be satisfied. That even if the Lord goes up in famine, I will be satisfied. I've been anchored. And your husband thinks you are crazy, your friends think you are crazy. They say, take this very seriously. You say, it's okay. I've been anchored. And that way you have your breakthrough. Let's pray. <laughs> Glory to God. Two things you want to pray about today. The first thing you want to pray about is this. That's the first thing you want to pray about. Are there, is there a blade or seed you have ignored? Father, I thank you because I remember that you did this and you did this and you did this and you did this. You give him thanks. And the second thing also you will do is that, Lord, I've been praying about this. In the remaining session tonight, Lord, open my eyes and let me see. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. 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 Go back to the seed. Go back to the blade. Go back to the seed. Go back to the blade. Go back to the seed. Go back to the blade. Go back to the seed. Go back to the blade. Go back to the seed. Go back to the blade. To 
In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, we thank you because you are kind. And I'm asking you in the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever your people need to see and hear, to gain speed, let them see it tonight. Every force of stagnation and delay tonight is broken. Career delay broken. Marital delay broken. Financial delay broken. In the name of Jesus, I command the root of delay to dry up. Thank you, Lord. It's done. Give him praise and glory.